Ukraine's defense capabilities have lately been upgraded as the conflict with Russia escalates. The Ukrainian military has acquired modern weapons from major allies led by the United States and the United Kingdom to counter the Russian threat. Images of Ukrainian soldiers carrying anti-tank missile launchers on their shoulders have gone viral throughout the world. This anti-tank weapon, capable of piercing even the most advanced armor, and especially valuable in armed struggle, has become a symbol of the Ukrainian resistance. The Javelin and NLAW missiles stand out among the Ukrainian Army's next-generation weapons, capable of defeating Russian tanks and armored vehicles. So, in today's video, we'll look at the NLAW, its history, and then wait until the end to hear us talk a little bit about the Javelin. C-17 cargo planes from the Royal Air Force of the United Kingdom arrived in Kiev on January 17th. British Defense Secretary Ben Wallace said on that day that Boris Johnson's administration had decided to supply Ukraine with anti-armor light defensive weaponry systems. The UK has deployed around 4,200 NLAWs to Ukraine, according to a British diplomat who spoke on the condition of anonymity to discuss the defense aid with the New York Times. The ambassador stated, we still consider it one of the greatest short-range defensive anti-tank weapons. In 2018, the United States began delivering its Javelin anti-tank missiles to Ukraine. He authorized a $200 million arms package in December of last year, which included more of these rounds. The NLAW was developed in collaboration with the British Ministry of Defense by the Swedish firm Saab. Although it has identical capabilities, it is less powerful than the FMG-148 Javelin. Its key strengths are the ability to defeat Russian tanks over short distances, although this does not imply that the NLAW is ineffective. It's the only device that can hit a tank or armored vehicle from a distance of 20 meters. So, you might be wondering, what anti-tank missiles are they? Anti-tank missiles are meant to destroy main battle tanks, which are more strongly armored than other armored vehicles, such as armored personnel carriers, for instance. Russia's main battle tanks, which have been deployed in considerable numbers, are equipped with contemporary and superior armor technologies, such as explosive reactive armor. In other words, when a warhead hits the tank's armor, it bursts outwards. This is done to deflect the blast and reduce the amount of damage done. However, against the current anti-tank missiles deployed by Ukrainian fighters, explosive reactive armor isn't much of a benefit. The NLAW and Javelin missiles are meant to target a tank from above in a top assault attacking the tank's turret at its weakest point. This will either utterly destroy the tank or render the personnel inside unconscious. With catastrophic results, the missiles may also be deployed in direct fire mode on less well-armored vehicles like armored personnel carriers, houses, and even low-flying helicopters. For opposing troops, this makes them highly adaptable and lethal weapons. The range and simplicity of employment of anti-tank missiles are perhaps their most significant advantages. They're light, can be carried by a single soldier, and require little training to use. Due to their small movements, they're also incredibly difficult to detect. NLAW. It's also known as the MBT LAW, the main battle tank and light anti-tank weapon, and it's a single shot, fire and forget disposable missile system designed for infantry usage. The shoulder-mounted weapon has a range of 2,600 feet and can fire a single 150 millimeter high explosive anti-tank missile. The joint British and Swedish designed NLAWs, developed by Saab Bofors Dynamics, are currently being manufactured by Thales Air Defense in Belfast, Northern Ireland. To date, the United Kingdom has delivered 3,615 short-range next-generation light anti-tank weapons. Because the NLAWs arrived before the battle, they were able to be extensively dispersed among the soldiers, and the Ukrainians are taking the initiative to destroy Russian armor. The NLAW can destroy a tank or vehicle from a distance of 20 to 400 meters for moving targets and up to 800 meters for stationary targets. The NLAW is a soft launch system, which means the missile is released without exploding and may be utilized by soldiers from within a confined location. It is easy to shoot, weighing just 27.5 pounds, and is light enough that the user may still carry another weapon, such as a rifle. The NLAW, like the American Javelin, can target the top of a tank's turret where the armor is most vulnerable. The operators only need to aim one meter above the tank and the downward shaped charge will take care of the rest. It takes around five seconds from target recognition to engagement. NLAW may be used to launch an attack from practically any vantage point, including atop a structure, behind a tree, or even in a ditch or trench. Operators can fire from within a building, from a basement, or from the second floor of a structure, all of which are out of range for most tanks. The NLAW may be used against soft targets such as vehicles, buses, and helicopters in indirect attack mode, 
but it can also be fired into structures, causing substantial damage. The NLAW has a drawback of being one shot, one kill. The operators only get one rocket to reach pay soil, after which the tube is discarded. NLAWs are not inexpensive either. Even though it's not precisely cheap, it is still a viable option for taking down a significantly more valuable asset, such as the main battle tank. Several soldiers will certainly shoot from atop structures to have a better downward perspective versus Russian armored tanks. Another benefit is that they may be taught to less experienced reserve territorial defense warriors how to operate them. As the Russians execute assaults on surrounding cities, the Ukrainians are already engaging in suburban residential street-to-street -street battles and predict more of this urban conflict in the future. A quick fact about the NLAW. NLAW is capable of destroying a variety of targets. While NLAW has the ability to destroy a tank, it may also be used to stop a variety of other targets. It may be employed against soft targets such as trucks, buses, vehicles, and helicopters in indirect assault mode. With NLAW, the hunter really becomes the prey. Tanks have typically provided operators with a safe way to track down the opponent. NLAW flips the script. Tanks may be targeted from practically any location, whether up in a structure, behind a tree, or in a ditch since they are man portable and flexible. It may also be securely shot from confined locations such as rooms, even if other soldiers are present. The NLAW makes it impossible for tanks to hide. While many anti-tank missiles must initially gain altitude before initiating a top assault, NLAW's overfly attack capability works at a range of just 20 meters, making it effective at close range and even while a tank is hidden. The rocket travels approximately a meter above the tank's roof, launching a deadly strike. In instances when the operator can only view a small area of the tank, the technique is also very successful. To assault tanks with NLAW, you don't need a squad. An ordinary soldier may be trained to utilize the system in under an hour. Then you may deploy NLAW-equipped infantry across the battlefield, waiting for a tank to arrive. The Javelin. The Javelin is also a fire and forget missile. It can be ready to fire in under 30 seconds and reloaded in under 20. This weapon allows for two sorts of attacks. First, a direct fire attack against fortified positions or structures and second, an aerial strike against armored vehicles. In a direct horizontal attack mode against fortifications or buildings, the missile rises to an altitude of 60 meters during flight and falls on the target vertically, allowing better penetration against armor. In an attack mode from above against armored vehicles, the missile rises to an altitude of 160 meters and falls on the target vertically, allowing better penetration against the armor. It can also engage in helicopters in this attack mode. The missile's warhead is made up of two shaped charges that are positioned in tandem. The first charge is used to destroy reactive armor, while the second charge is used to pierce conventional armor with a bigger diameter. The two shaped charges have a total penetrating capability of 762 millimeters of armor steel. Before the missile propulsion system is triggered, the missile is ejected at a minimum safe distance from the launcher. Because catapulting the missile out of the launcher tube creates pressured gases that may inflict significant harm, allowing the shooter to be less visible and the missile to be launched in restricted locations, as long as no one is behind the launcher. Thanks to the fire and forget homing mechanism, the shooter may seek cover just after the missile is launched. Two people are usually required to utilize the Javelin missile launcher, a carrier and a shooter. Because of the missile's accuracy and force, Russian crew experimented with safeguards designed to destroy the missile before it directly reached the turret. As proven by countless photographs of wrecked Russian T-72s and T-80s, effectiveness is not always assured. What are your thoughts on the NLAW anti-tank missiles? Do you believe it made a difference when the UK sent them out there? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.